Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here for the Gold Derby uh, Film Awards, the 16th annual Gold Derby Film Awards, honoring the best films of 2017. Uh, Daniel Montgomery here with uh, our my fellow uh, editors, uh, Chris Beecham and Joyce Eng. And, uh, you know, our, our own users voted for these awards, uh, well over a thousand. I don't know, Chris, if you know the exact number or closer to the exact number of uh, voters we ultimately ended up with. Um, cer certainly a, a number, uh, 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 one of the largest awards groups uh, at, at the, uh, you know, certainly during the awards season. Uh, so we're giving out awards in, I, I believe, 21 categories, is it? Uh, which uh, I will get started by announcing the win nominees and winners for Best Foreign Language Film and Best Documentary. Uh, uh, starting with Best Foreign Language Film, our nominees are BPM, Beats per, per Minute, A Fantastic Woman, First They Killed My Father, In the Fade, and The Square. And the Gold Derby Award goes to A Fantastic Woman, uh, which uh, is interesting. I, I thought this would be a closer race with uh, BPM, Beats Per Minute, um, and it was for a while, but a uh, uh, fantastic woman ended up with a pretty decisive victory there. Uh, next up, best documentary. Uh, we've got the nominees are uh, City of Ghosts, Faces Places, Icarus, An Inconvenient Sequel, and Jane. And our winner for best documentary is Faces Places. Uh, which was another uh, fairly decisive win, and it's the front runner to win the Oscar this weekend as well. Do you think Jane lost because it didn't get an Oscar nomination? Um, you know what? I I do think there's a possibility where, like, our own users, of course, we follow awards so obsessively. As soon as it didn't get a best uh, best uh, documentary nomination at the Oscars, that probably reduced the number of people who were going to seek it out during this period of time. Uh, just because they would have thought they needed to see it to predict the Oscars, uh, so so that probably didn't help. But uh, I, I don't know we if that situations in, in both our film and TV where people want to avenge, you know, a snob that they think is there. So and and Jane has really done so well at so many award shows. I, I, it's kind of surprising it didn't do better here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although Jane, it did finish second in our our voting. I'll, you know, even though Faces Places did have a fairly sizable advantage, that was a, a, a pretty decisive win. Uh, I have the next two categories. First up is Best Animated Feature. The nominees are The Breadwinner, Coco, Ferdinand, The Lego Batman Movie, and Loving Vincent. And the Gold Derby Film Award goes to Coco. Surprise, surprise. Uh, next up is Best Visual Effects. The nominees are Blade Runner 2049, Dunkirk, The Shape of Water, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and War for the Planet of the Apes. And the Gold Derby Film Award goes to Blade Runner 2049. And I believe we still have War for the Planet of the Apes uh, predicted to win the Oscar, is that correct? Last I checked. Uh, I believe so. I think yeah. I'm predicting uh, Blade Runner at the Oscars now too, just because it feels like you know it's it's rare for a film to win visual effects on its only nominations. The Oscars haven't liked Planet of the Apes before, um, and and you know Blade Runner has five nominations, sort of like Interstellar uh, a few years ago. So it, it it feels like Blade Runner to me, but uh, that's still close. And actually, our voting was quite close for that too. It was a uh, Blade Runner over War for the Planet of the Apes by about fifty votes. Hmm. Coco, Coco was a blowout. <laughs> well, I've got best sound next, a category we feel like they should just combine and make one sound category at the Oscars because I don't think most voters, if you're not a sound mixer or a sound editor or maybe a director, you don't necessarily know what the difference is. Um, honor them all, give all the mixers and editors an award, but, but, but you know, anyway, best sound for us is Baby Driver, Blade Runner 2049, Dunkirk, The Shape of Water, and Star Wars The Last Jedi. And our Gold Derby winner for 2017 is Dunkirk, which a lot of people are predicting for the Oscars this weekend. For both of them. For both, exactly. 
Um, best production design, we've got our nominees, Beauty and the Beast, Blade Runner 2049, Call Me By Your Name, Dunkirk, and The Shape of Water. And do I have the stars on the right one there, Daniel? Um, actually, yeah, I was about to, it's, we almost had a La La Land Moonlight situation here. Uh, uh, we have the stars on the wrong one. The winner is uh, actually The Shape of Water. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I just, <laughs> this is just our own internal messaging and, and I, I thought that I had made that mistake. Were you, were you the Brian of PWC here? <laughs> I caught it. I caught it before we even said anything, didn't I? Uh, yeah, get 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 stop photographing Emma Stone backstage. Um, <laughs> those those were actually uh, that production design was very close. Uh, Shape of Water was only about twenty or thirty votes ahead of uh, Blade Runner. Sound was not close. Uh, uh, Dunkirk had almost twice as many votes as second place, which was Baby Driver. Our nominees for best song are Evermore from Beauty and the Beast, The Mystery of Love from Call Me By Your Name, Remember Me from Coco, This Is Me from The Greatest Showman, and Visions of Gideon from Call Me By Your Name. And we've got our first big upset, I think, of the day uh, here on our awards in terms of where Oscars are potentially going. Uh, the Mystery of Love wins best song at the Gold Derby Film Awards. In decisive fashion, it was uh, uh, actually 301 votes ahead of Coco's uh, Remember Me in second place. Did Visions of Gideon get any? It did, actually. Uh, Visions of Gideon ranked fourth, uh, so, but it, there was not a lot of vote splitting. Uh, you know, Between the two, The Mystery of Love was the decisive choice. It's like uh, City of song. Stars versus Audition. Which is weird, because I honestly, with those two songs, I would have gone with Audition in a heartbeat. Well, to finish out our music categories, best score, we've got Blade Runner 2049, Coco, Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, and The Shape of Water. And congratulations to uh, Alexandra Desplat, who follows Gold Derby. I've seen him out on many events the past few weeks. Um, he is the winner of our Gold Derby Film Award for The Shape of Water. And I actually went into uh, uh you know, looked into the history of this category, uh, you know, when I, was, I wrote the article uh, that will be published as soon as we're done here, uh, I, I was gonna figure out how many awards has Alexandre Desplat won from us? And I'm like, okay, like three or four. So this is actually his first Gold Derby Award, uh, and I believe his 10th nomination, ninth or 10th nomination with us, uh, uh, which uh, surprised me. I thought, I thought we'd given it to him at least once before. But, uh, That's pretty similar to his Oscar record because he didn't run until Grand Budapest. And we, and we awarded him, we nominated him for even more uh, film scores than the Oscars did up to that point. And we, we didn't uh, give it to him for uh, Grand Budapest that year. So so he, he was pretty overdue. So He's our Roger Deakins. He's our, our Roger Deakins, yes. Uh, but Phantom Thread and Dunkirk also had a, a lot of support in that category. It was uh, fairly evenly divided the support there. Well, you're up next, Daniel. Yep, uh, next up, uh, the nominees for best makeup and hair, and we nominate five uh, films in this category, which I think we all think the Oscars should. It seems fairly arbitrary to, to me at least that there are only three nominees in that uh, Oscar category uh, when there is makeup invo and hairstyling involved in more than three films per year. Um, so our justly five nominees for Best Makeup and Hair are Beauty and the Beast, Darkest Hour, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I, Tanya, and The Shape of Water. And the Gold Derby Award for Makeup and Hair goes to, no surprise, Darkest Hour. That was a pretty decisive victory as well over The Shape of Water. Uh, in second place, and Itania in third place. But if you combine Shape of Water and Itania, their votes, that's still short of the darkest hour. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Best Costume Design. The nominees are Beauty and the Beast, Blade Runner 2049, Itania, Phantom Thread, and The Shape of Water. And the Gold Derby Award goes to another Oscar frontrunner, Phantom Thread. Uh, this was a complete blowout. Nothing was even close. I actually think Phantom Thread had more votes than the other nominees combined. Hmm. I think it's going to win the Oscar. It was surprising it didn't win um, 
the other night at the guild, but I had a theory I told Tom about the next, maybe two days later, I just thought as I was typing up the score reports and entering everything, it just occurred to me who would be, remember Oscar voter, Oscar voting is every branch voting for everything. So it's not just costume designers voting. I thought, would a costume designer be watching that movie going, not even necessarily criticizing the costumes, maybe they would, as much because it's about a costume designer, fashion designer, would they be saying, oh, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that that way. He wouldn't hold, uh, he wouldn't put a pin in his mouth that way, or he wouldn't say this, or he wouldn't do that, or, or would they have been overly critical and could that have been why it didn't win in the costume design? Or he's so cranky that you know, they thought they thought it made uh, fashion designers and costume designers look bad. What are those things? But they don't have to worry about that at the uh, the Oscars because I think I think with all the other branches voting too, it, well, they won't be as picky. Yeah, um, I have the next one. It's best film editing, and the nominees are Baby Driver, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, Dunkirk, Get Out, and The Shape of Water. And the Gold Derby Film Award goes to Dunkirk. And I think that's still um, our particular winner at the Oscars, but I feel like Baby Driver is coming on strong after it's BAFTA win. Yeah, and it's, uh, that's exactly how the voting came down in our Gold Derby Awards. It was those two films, neck and neck. Uh, Dunkirk won by a reasonably uh, safe margin, about 60 votes, uh, but it was still, like both of those were far and away the two closest uh, contenders to win this one. That's a tough one to predict this weekend. I, I, we've seen them go with a uh, best picture nominee uh, in the past, but we, then we've seen them go with what I call most edited, not best edited necessarily, but most edited. And that might be baby driver. I also wonder if certain voters are still confused by Dunkirk. One of the things that impressed me most about the Dunkirk film editing, and and it has such a, a unique, weird timeline the way the way it's told. What impressed me most about the editing was how clear that I found it. I can see why other people would be, you know. Yeah, I could totally see just seven. some voters just not getting it and just being like, "Why isn't this just like chronological?" Like, but it's you know what you're getting in a Christopher Nolan film. Nothing is ever in order. <laughs> And it's and it's out of order for I think a good reason. Like they're they're certain that the experiences of the different characters kind of fit in a different time frame in terms of uh, how you want to tell that story and what the urgency is. So I'm I'm very happy with this film editing. Uh, next up, we have best cinematography. The nominees are Blade Runner 2049, Call Me by Your Name, Dunkirk, Mudbound, and The Shape of Water. And the Gold Derby Film Award goes to Blade Runner 2049. Yay, Roger Deakins. Yes, which uh, could, this was a complete blowout. Second place was Call Me By Your Name, but it wasn't it wasn't close at all. Um, and but unlike the Oscars, this is actually Roger Deakins' second Gold Derby Award. Uh, we did give it to him a few years ago for True Grit. And by the way, we we have these really nice certificates that uh, Tom originally designed and Rob Lacuria. Uh, goes in and enters all of the winners. And as soon as we're done with this live video, I send those to each of the individual people as well as the studios and campaigners and so forth. And we get lots of comments, whether it's TV or film awards that we do about how much they love getting those certificates and, and uh, they know they've won in many cases um, here with us. So we'll, we'll send those out uh, later this morning. We now have two categories that the Oscars do not have. Uh, we, we, we've done these for many, many years, and we'll start with Best break, Breakthrough Performer. The person we, uh, that you all nominated is somebody that had the biggest uh, breakthrough success uh, over the past year. We don't attach a specific film because some of these people have uh, had more than one film. Uh, so we, we uh, don't give, give a film designation here. So the five nominees are Timothy Chalamet, Gal Gadot, Tiffany Haddish, Daniel Kaluuya, and Brooklyn Prince, and the best breakthrough performer of the year, as voted by all of you, is Timothy Chalamet. Which is, uh, I would guess, a surprise to no one at Gold Derby. He's uh, like, if we if we want traffic for an item, like other than America's Got Talent, we just put Timothy Chalamet's name in a headline, and it'll take off. Uh, like he is so loved at Gold Derby. It's Timothy uh, Chalamet dash America's Got Talent in the URL. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's what we'll do from now on. 
Um, and and second place was Daniel Kaluuya, who actually beat Timothy Chalamet at the Rising Star Award at the BAFTAs. Uh, but yeah, this wasn't close. Timothy Chalamet won this by about a mile. <laughs> Another one that we do, of course, it's, it's SAG Awards and uh, Critics' Choice Awards. That's Best Ensemble Cast. And the five nominees for us on that are Call Me By Your Name, Get Out, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards. And our Best Ensemble Cast winner is the same as at SAG, and that's Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Yeah. And uh, given the nominees in this category, I... And, and, you know, the presumed fandom, uh, uh, I, I would have thought this was going to be closer than it ended up being. Uh, three billboards had more than twice as many votes as Lady Bird in second place. And, uh, uh, you know, and Lady Bird and Call Me By Your Name were really close together in terms of their votes. Uh, so if you add those together, they're still short of three billboards, uh, which uh, surprised me. It was such a, an overwhelming favorite here. Hmm. I'll continue on with the two screenplay categories. For Adapted, we have Blade Runner 2049, Call Me By Your Name, The Disaster Artist, Molly's Game, and Mudbound. And the best adapted screenplay of the year goes to James Ivory and Call Me By Your Name. Uh, no, no real surprise there, uh, and that was that, that was probably the biggest runaway in terms of uh, a lead. Uh, no one was really coming close to "Call Me by Your Name." He's been at the Oscars, you know, as a director in the past, and never has won before. And he's close to ninety. It's going to be for me. I think he's got that pretty safely locked up for Sunday night. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing him finally get on stage at the Oscars. It'll be crazy if. if both he and Anya Varda win as 89 year olds. It, it depends on who wins first because Anya Varda is about a week older. Than yeah, she's like eight days James older. Than so if, if they give adapted screenplay first, he'll be the oldest winner of all time. For uh, like for 20 minutes. minutes <laughs> until Anya Varda uh, sneaks in. Ahead well, of and if let's just say a surprise win. happens and Christopher Plummer wins early in the evening, He's also 89, but he's a few months younger than them, so he could be the oldest winner ever for, say... Oh, he's 30. 88. Well, he'll be... He'll still be the oldest actor. He'll just break his own record. Right, right. But yeah. he, he would he would then be surpassed by one of the two of them, or maybe both of them, if should he win, um, as the oldest person ever uh, in, in, earlier in the evening. So, um, depending on the order of the ceremony. And then a best original screenplay, just to continue on, The Big Sick... Get Out, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards, which is the same five as the Oscars. And so this helps you at all in terms of tipping you off maybe for which way the Oscar voters might go or maybe not. Get Out and Jordan Peele are the winner here at the Gold Derby Awards. And this was one of the most interesting categories to watch the votes coming in. We, Looking at this award season, it looks like a potentially three-way race between Get Out, Lady Bird, and Three Billboards. Uh, but at these awards, it was always uh, a two-way race between Get Out and Lady Bird. And what was interesting is that Lady Bird had about a five or ten vote advantage over Get Out for a while. And then there is a point, I think, after the, you know, somewhere after the Writers Guild Awards, where Get Out really, you know, picked up steam and and ended up with about a sixty to seventy point advantage uh, for the win. But those two were locked together fairly closely for for the entire race. That's hmm. also when Get Out toppled Lady Bird in our Oscar predictions after WGA. But then it started like switching back and forth between uh, that and Three Billboards. So I think Get Out is still number one right now for the Oscar in our predictions. That's what I'm predicting. I, I think yeah. it's really close. I don't have any confidence at all, but that's, I think. I, I feel think. like they'll want to give him something, give him and the movie something. And it's also the most original and they tend to like scripts like that, like Eternal Sunshine and Her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now I'm vacillating between that and Three Billboards. I might switch to Three. I, I'm rooting for Get Out, and so if I predict Three Billboards and I'm wrong and it's Get Out, I'll be happy that it's Get Out. And if I'm right and it's Three Billboards, then at least I get a right prediction. So I might I might do that for um, an emotional win-win. <laughs> 
Uh, next up are the supporting acting categories, uh, starting with Best Supporting Actor. Uh, our nominees are Willem Dafoe for The Florida Project, Army Hammer, Call Me By Your Name, Sam Rockwell, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Patrick Stewart for Logan, and Michael Stuhlbarg for Call Me By Your Name. And the Gold Derby Award goes to, speaking of which, uh, Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. How close was that? Not as close as I would have thought, but you know what? Uh, you know, Call Me By Your Name didn't have a vote splitting problem in Best Song, but they might have had it here. Uh, Army Hammer and Michael Stuhlbarg were second and third place, and they were so close together in votes. Uh, they were just separated by 22 votes, uh, the two of them. If you add them together, they squeak ahead of Sam Rockwell. So mm -hmm. if there had only been one nominee, I wonder if all of the Call Me By Your Name support would have focused on one of them and we would have had an upset here. Right. Uh, people that, that don't know or, or haven't voted or, or don't remember, we, we don't allow rankings. You just pick one. So there's no, there's no strategy involved. There's no putting your... Your, who your perceived uh, competitor is, you know, at the bottom, there's just one. So a Call Me By Your Name fan had to choose. Um, and they couldn't do both. And uh, next up, we've got Best Supporting Actress. Uh, the nominees are Tiffany Haddish, Girls Trip, Holly Hunter, The Big Sick, Allison Janney, I, Tanya, Lori Metcalf, Lady Bird, and Octavia Spencer, The Shape of Water. And the Gold Derby Award goes to perhaps a slight upset. It's Lori Metcalf, actually, for Lady Bird. Uh, even after Allison Janney has won everything along the way, Allison Janney, Gold Derby, loves Allison Janney. Uh, uh, so, so this was a, a bit of a surprise, and it wasn't even really close. It was uh, uh, 120 uh, votes uh, Lori Metcalf had as an advantage over uh, Janney, which... Uh, was fairly interesting. I, it makes me worry about the Oscars because it felt like Jenny would be a, such a, a clear gold derby kind of winner. Mm. I feel like a lot of people want Laurie to win and are no matter how much they love Allison, like they, they feel like Laurie should win this time around. Could be, I, I, I think if that race is closer and we're talking, you're probably seeing a lot of our secret Oscar ballots coming in and and it's about half and half with Allison and Lori. Um, really, nobody else getting any support. I think Lori is still um, predicted to win the Indie Spirit um, ahead of Allison, which I, I can totally see happening. Hmm. Um, next up, we have Best Actor. The nominees are Timothy Chalamet, Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread, James Franco, The Disaster Artist, Daniel Kaluuya, Get Out, and Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. And the Gold Derby Film Award goes to, surprise, surprise, Timothy Chalamet, Call Me By Your Name. Was this a runaway? Yeah, that was, it was pretty much a <laughs> runaway. It wasn't, it wasn't quite as big a margin as adapted screenplay for Call Me By Your Name, but yeah, uh, Timothy Chalamet had a more than 300 vote advantage over second place Gary Oldman. Uh, and those were the only two who were really in it. Uh, there was a significant support for the other nominees too, but they weren't anywhere close to the two leaders and Chalamet just kind of owned it. Wow. And we'll enjoy it for today. <laughs> <laughs> and and for, for Saturday, he could win the Spirit Award since Gary Oldman isn't there. So uh, yeah, we're not necessarily predicting him to win the Oscar uh, uh, yeah, because Gary Oldman is just steamrolled over everything. But this, this, this didn't surprise me, given how much love I knew there was for Call Me By Your Name. He already has two wins today in the span of like 15 minutes, so. Yeah. Uh, next is Best Actress. The nominees are Sally Hawkins, The Shape of Water, Frances McDormand, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Margot Robbie, I, Tanya, Saoirse Ronan, Lady Bird, and Meryl Streep, The Post. And the Gold Derby Film Award goes to Frances McDormand. Not a shocker either. <laughs> no, and it, it wasn't it wasn't close, uh, but there was a lot of support for Saoirse Ronan, who was in second place, and Sally Hawkins, who was in third place. Uh, they all got a, a, a significant portion of those votes. 
Um, but yeah, I, I actually would have thought this would have been closer between Francis and maybe Sersha or maybe even Margot Robbie might have snuck in with more support. Um, but this is actually, if you count uh, the ensemble cast win, this is actually Frances McDormand's third Gold Derby Award because she actually won our TV award for uh, Olive Kitteridge uh, three years ago. Hmm. Well, let's finish up. We've got two to go. Uh, all the entire list will be uh, posted in our forums thread, as well as Daniel's got an article going up uh, just as soon as we're done. So if you missed anything, you can uh, catch up with us uh, online on any any portions of Gold Derby. Best Director, we've got Guillermo del Toro in The Shape of Water, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird, Luca Guadagnino for Call Me By Your Name, Christopher Nolan for Dunkirk, and Jordan Peele for Get Out. Uh, again, no real shock, shocker here. Uh, Guillermo del Toro is our winner at the Gold Derby Awards. A pretty safe uh, margin of victory there. Uh, you know, about 150, 160 votes over Christopher Nolan, who did have a lot of support uh, in second place for Dunkirk. And uh, third place was Luca Guadagnino, also had uh, ample support for Call Me By Your Name. But uh, yeah, they, they weren't really close to taking it down Guillermo. And that brings us to Best Picture. We have 10 nominees, uh, as we've done for several years. Uh, they're not they're maybe half the same as what the Oscars have, and you'll see that as we run down the nominees. They are Baby Driver, Blade Runner 2049, Call Me By Your Name, Dunkirk, The Florida Project, Get Out, I, Tanya, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water, and three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. And I think you've sensed a little bit of a pattern here. Our Gold Derby Film Award winner, Best Picture of 2017, is not one of the Oscar frontrunners. Call Me By Your Name is our winner. And it was our winner in decisive fashion. It had more than twice as many votes as uh, second place, uh, Shape of Water, uh, and third place, uh, three billboards outside in Missouri. And uh, our top five was rounded out by Lady Bird and Get Out. Wow. Well, it's been a fun year. I, th I think it's one of the best film years I can remember. I've enjoyed so many um, from, from the past few months. And uh, it's going to be a fun Oscar ceremony, I think. Um, if you want to, like I said a moment ago, see the full list, read Daniel's article on our homepage. Go to the forums. I'll post that in there in just a moment. Um, also, IMDb has all of our Gold Derby Award winners and nominees from every single year, uh, uh, TV and film. If you're ever wondering if somebody's won with us before, uh, just look up their name online, look up that picture, and you can see all of its nominations. Uh, we use it ourselves for uh, when we're in a, in a hurry and looking to see if somebody's won before or not. All of the nominees I checked yesterday are listed um, for this year. Of course, they'll, it may take them a day or two to get the, uh, the winners updated on IMDb, but they are there as well. So thanks, Joyce. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, we've got two live shows Sunday. Uh, be sure to watch those. We'll have a live pre-show before the Oscars. Fifteen contributors, including the three of us, will be on uh, at some point during the course of the two hours from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock Pacific. And then as soon as the ceremony is over, we've got about eight people lined up to be on the post show, talk about winners, talk about surprises, talk about Jimmy Kimmel. And uh, so that'll be part of our Sunday uh, Sunday plans. So thanks everybody and have a great day.